Today we'll be creating this particular neon circles loop. It's basically a shader node based effect and it's really simple to set up so without any further waste of time. So let's see how we can create it. In our default scene, we're going to press X to delete our default cube and then press shift A and search for a mesh circle. And before you do anything, you can go to the drop down menu that appears at the bottom left, click it to expand it and change the fill type from nothing to n-gon or triangle fan. It doesn't make too much of a difference in our particular case. So we can start off with the material. The first thing that we want to do is go to our render properties and switch on bloom and also change the viewport shading from solid to rendered by pressing this button up here. That way we'll be able to see the differences that we make. Then we'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag up to create a new window and change this from the 3D viewport to the shader editor. Once you've done that, you can press the new to add in a new material and we can select the principal PSDF and press X to delete it. Now we can press shift A and search for a wave texture and we can just plug this directly into the surface for now to see what we have. And these are how the waves are, but that's not what we want. We want them to be concentric circles. So we can change this from bands to rings and also change it from the X axis to the Z axis. And finally, you see it's starting from somewhere off the actual object. So with the node wrangler switched on, we can press control T to get in the texture coordinate and mapping nodes and switch it from generated to object. Of course, if you don't have node wrangler switched on, you can just add in the mapping nodes and texture coordinates manually. Now we'll reduce the scale so that we get essentially just one ring. So something like 0.3 or even 0.2 will work out well enough. And using the phase offset, we can actually create the effect that the rings are going out. And right now it seems like it's a black ring going out, but we'll change that in a while. So for now, we'll keep the phase offset at zero itself. The next thing is actually controlling the fall off of this particular wave. So we'll press shift A and search for a math node and we'll change the type from add to power. And now if we start reducing the value, you see how the black region starts decreasing. So we're going to reduce the exponent to something like 0.3. And now you can barely see the black in the center, but to actually see this move, we'll set the animation as well. So we'll just go to this phase offset and we'll say something like hash frame by 10. And we'll change all of this later on when we're actually animating it. And right now it's going inward. So we're going to have to make it hash frame by minus 10. And that way we get this black circle going outside. And that's exactly what we wanted, but we don't want it to be a black circle going out. We want everything to be black except a white circle going out. And to do that, we'll press shift and search for an invert node and plug that in after the power node. So now we get a white circle going outward, but a lot of the areas that are supposed to be black still get slight values of white. So to change that, we'll search for another power node. So we'll take this, we'll press shift D and plug that afterwards. And this time we'll increase the exponent to something really large, like maybe eight. So now if you play it, you just get this white ring that goes out to the edges. So this sets up one single circle that's going around, but we need this circle to fade off at the edge. Otherwise it just gets clipped off. So to fix that, we can press shift A and search for a gradient texture and we can control shift click it with the node wrangler switched on to connect it directly to the material output. Otherwise you can connect it manually. And then again, we need the gradient to be centered. So we can take this same texture coordinate and mapping nodes and connect this vector into the vector of the gradient texture as well. And now we get a line through the center, but we don't want it to be a line. We want it to be a sphere so we can change it to spherical. And that way we get a gradient which is super bright in the center and goes towards black towards the edge. Now I want the edge to be a little further inside. So I'll press shift A and search for a color ramp so that we have more control. And we'll just bring the black in a little bit. And we'll also change this from linear to ease so that it's just a slightly smoother fall off. Now that we have that set, we have to multiply these two so we can press shift A and search for either a vector math or in this case, since we're using only black and white values, we can use a regular math node. And also since it's colors, you can use a mix node. So it's really up to you as to which node you want. So I'm going to use a mix node set from float to color and from mix to multiply. And the reason I'm using this particular node is because it's more versatile in case I do want to use some other type of mixing mode later on. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as is. And I'm going to increase the factor all the way to one so that it gets multiplied completely and then control shift click it to see what we have. If you actually play the animation, you can see how the ring fades off towards the edges, which is exactly how we want it to be. Now that we have that set, we can actually create this such that this ring is emissive and the other areas are transparent. To do that, we'll press shift A and search for a mix shader, plug that in right here, and we'll use this output from the multiply as the factor of the mix shader. And for the first shader, we'll press shift A and search for an emission shader. 
and plug that in. And for the second shader, we'll press Shift A and search for a transparent BSDF and plug that into the second slot. Now we see nothing at all is happening. So the first thing that we'll do is switch transparent and emission so that emission is in the bottom socket and transparent is in the top socket. And that way we get something, but evidently it's not close to what we want. And that's because we have to tell EV to actually switch on transparency. So we can go to the material properties over here, go down to the blend mode and change it from opaque to alpha blend. And immediately we get this nice transparent shader with some emission in the center. Now, because we're using this nice gradient from the wave texture, it already seems like there's a nice bloom. However, we can always increase the strength to get even more bloom if required. So I'll keep it at 10 for now. And I also don't want it to fall off on both of the sides. I want it to fall off only on one side. So I'm going to change the wave texture type from sign to saw. And that way we get a sharp fall off on the inside and a bright color on the outside. And that looks all right for my particular animation as of now. The next thing I have to do is actually get a plane and distribute this object all over the plane so that we get multiple of these variations. And we're going to use the help of geometry nodes to do that because it's the simplest way around. We'll press shift A and search for a plane and we'll just scale the plane up by a little bit. And then we'll change this window from the shader editor to the geometry node editor and then press the plus to add in a new geometry node tree. We'll press shift A and search for a distribute points on faces node, plug that in right here, and we'll change the type from random to poise on disk so that we don't get anything that's too close to each other by increasing the distance min. And along with that, I'll also increase the density so that we have quite a lot more of them. After that, we have to instance these circles onto the points. So we'll press shift A and search for an instance on points node and plug that right here. And for the instance, we'll use our circle. So we can take the circle from the outliner drag and drop it right in here and plug the geometry into the instance node. And now we get a really cool effect. And this could be it by itself. However, I want the circles to be of random scales. So I'll press shift A and search for a random value node. And because I want it to be the exact same on the X and the Y and the Z does not matter because the Z scale is zero by default anyway, I can keep it at float and not change it to vector and plug that into the scale. Now I can play around with the min and max. I'll change the min to minus 0.5 and the max to 0.5. And that way I just get a bunch of these circles. Of course, the scale of minus 0.5 doesn't make too much of a difference in this scenario. It could, it might as well be changed to 0.1 or something. It's really up to you. The next thing is that all of these are actually appearing and disappearing at the exact same time, which is a cool effect in case that's the type of effect that you want, but I don't want it to be like that. So I'm going to have to play around with the actual shader node. To do that, I'll switch back from the geometry node to the shader editor. And before doing anything, I'll set the animation defaults. So I'll go to my output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second, change the end frame to 150. So that it's a five second long animation, change the output folder to wherever you want it to be. File format is going to be FFmpeg video and coding. I'm going to change from Matroska to MPEG4 with an output quality of perceptually lossless. Then I'm going to select our circle again and we get the material over here. And the first thing that I want is to delete the driver for the wave texture. So I'll right click and click delete driver change the face offset to zero, increase the timeline, go to frame zero, and then press shift A and search for a value node and plug this into the face offset. And I'm going to actually animate this value. So I'll hover over it and press I and then go to frame 150, increase the value to any even multiple of pi. So in this case, I'll go with four pi. So four star pi and hit enter and then hover over it and tap I. So now if you actually play the animation, it starts off slow, it speeds up and then increases. And we've also had to make it minus two pi. That's why the circles are going inward. So we'll go to frame 150, type minus four star pi and then hit I. And we don't want it to slow down, speed up in the center and slow down again. So we'll come down here, press T linear. And that way it's just a linear animation. And that seems all right. But to actually randomize this, we can press shift A and search for a math node and keep it on add itself. But we're going to add in a random value. So we'll press shift A and search for an object info node. And we can take this random socket. If you actually look at what the random value gives is it gives a random value for each of these circles between zero to one. So we can press shift A and search for a math node and set it to multiply and then just increase the second value to quite a bit so that the difference between them increases a lot. In this case, all of them just look bright, but the difference has now increased by quite a bit. And now we can plug this into the add value. And then if we actually control shift click the mix shader, you can see how each of them are starting at a random time and it's very random. So that looks all right for what I want. And I also want this to have some sort of random colors as well. 
And for that, we can start off with the emission node over here. So we'll press Shift A and search for a color ramp node, plug this color into the color and change this black to maybe a reddish color and then change this white to maybe a bluish color. And to actually choose which of these each circle gets, we can use that same random value from here and just plug that into the factor. So now each sphere has a different color. To actually see this pop better, we can go to the world properties and just change the background color all the way to black. And that way we see these circles actually pop much nicer. Now you can always go around and play with the power values and things like that to change the fall off based on your preferences, but have fun experimenting with this because there are so many settings that you can change. For example, in the wave texture, you can actually increase the distortion and the detail and the detail scale along with the detail roughness to just get these really cool looking textures all around. And that also loops and animates and maybe it could be like paint droplets or things like that. It's based on your imagination, but the effects are absolutely unlimited. You can always get something really cool like this. It's just different textures that are changing over time and perfectly looping. It's up to you to see what you want to do. However, I'm going to leave the distortion at zero just so that we have only these circles for you to play around with. Next, we can actually set up our camera. So we can just press seven to go to the top view. Control Alt Numpad 0 to snap the camera to view and then select the camera either from the outliner or from here and then just go GZ to bring it in on the Z axis and then also go to the camera properties here, go to viewport display and increase passport out all the way to one so that we don't see anything outside the camera view. And this is what we currently have. Last up, the only thing left to do is go to your render properties, go down to color management, change the look to something that suits your needs better. So I'm actually going to keep it at high contrast and then just go ahead and render animation. Another thing that I just want to do is label everything really well. So we can just select these wave textures up to the power, press control J to create a frame and label this as circles so that people who are actually using this file apart from me, those who might take it from Patreon, knows exactly what each of these do. So remember this gradient texture and the color ramp is for the edged fade off. We can call this as edge fade. And of course, this setup that we had over here, we can press control J to add in a frame for it as well. And we can call this as offset creator or offset. And that should be enough. So if you like this one, be sure to check out my other tutorials. I'm sure you'll like them as well. If you have any questions, queries, comments, or just suggestions, leave them down in the comments below and I will respond to as many for as long as I can. Until the next video comes out, keep creating and stay creative.